success. Explore new ideas and new worlds here on Arizona PBS, a community service of Arizona State University. The easiest and best way to support Arizona PBS is by becoming a sustaining member. Your monthly contribution of $5 or more comes directly from your bank account or credit card, so you know your membership is always current. It also means no more renewal notices in your mailbox. So more of your dollars go to the programs you love. It's convenient for you, greener for us, and better for the planet. Become a sustaining member today. Coming up next on Arizona PBS, life and world. Hello, I'm Paula Kerger, President and CEO of PBS. I am so pleased to see the next generation of journalists emerging from the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism. Arizona PBS takes great pride in maintaining the highest standards of ethical journalism shared by national shows such as the PBS NewsHour, Washington Week in Review, and Frontline. From the issues facing this community to the challenges and opportunities across the country and around the globe, PBS will continue to be a leader in news and public affairs. From all of us at PBS, thank you for your support of Cronkite News. Coming soon to Arizona PBS. They're a London team of forensic pathologists. I don't want this. Cutting them apart. But you do want them to have justice. And they help the police investigate murders. A gunman who's killed four people in two hours. But to solve these crimes... I need evidence. I need motive. They'll have to put their own lives on the line. I will do everything that I can to get the person who did this. Explains why this killing's so different. Today's the day to get away with murder. Silent Witness. Sunday night at 10 on Arizona PBS. Support for Arizona PBS comes from viewers like you and from... The Denture Experts with their digital technology strive to give you a confident and natural smile with comfortable fitting dentures or implants with no sores or odors. Information and appointments at thedentureexperts.com or 480-275-6284. From the Cronkite Studios in downtown Phoenix, this is Cronkite News. Desert migrants left dry. Why this humanitarian aid group faces charges after trying to help immigrants along the border. Mayors from Arizona joined dozens more from across the country in Washington, D.C. today, tackling issues of immigration, childhood obesity, and homelessness. 114 days after the Las Vegas shooting, a survivor is finally ready to be released from a valley hospital. What doctors are calling a miraculous recovery. Cronkite News starts now. Good evening and welcome to Cronkite News on Arizona PBS. I'm Adriana de Alba. And I'm Troy Lynch. Thank you for joining us. Eight humanitarian workers with the group No More Deaths are now facing federal charges, including entering a wildlife refuge without a permit. One of them, an ASU instructor, is charged with felony harboring of undocumented immigrants. These charges come shortly after the aid group released evidence allegedly showing Border Patrol agents destroying supplies left for migrants to trying to cross. Crockett News reporter Lillian Donahue went to the remote desert area near the border where the group presented its case and shows us how their work is carried out. Over the past two decades, the remains of nearly 7,000 people have been found along the border. Groups like No More Deaths say they're trying to save lives by leaving water and food behind, but continue to find resources decimated before migrants can get to them. Unforgiving terrain, stifling heat, and dangerous wildlife consume parts of the southern border. Volunteers with no more deaths cross this landscape daily, leaving life-saving supplies. This is a type of area where people are crossing. Um, the remains of three people were found right in this area. It's a treacherous voyage, which is why certain groups leave supplies along the route, hoping to make this potentially deadly trip a bit safer for undocumented immigrants trying to cross. The organization No More Deaths Arizona has put out nearly 32,000 of these water jugs in the past six years alone. And 80% of that has been used by migrants on these trails. We try and leave them in spots that'll be shaded, protected from the sun visible from the trail, but also not overly visible to protect them from destruction and vandalization. A recent report by the organization says volunteers in just one desert corridor found more than 3,500 gallons of water destroyed over a three-year period. 
This video, obtained through hidden cameras placed by No More Deaths, allegedly shows Border Patrol agents knocking over jugs and pouring out the water. So you get a good shot. Pick up this trash somebody left on the trail. For its part, Border Patrol says they don't tolerate this kind of behavior. Tucson sector does not condone or encourage the destruction or tampering with any water or food. If it does happen, we want to be away, made aware of it, so therefore we can take corrective actions against the agents that conduct those activities. The destruction of aid supplies is a deadly act. But No More Death says they're not satisfied and will continue to watch Border Patrol practices. In the meantime, volunteers continue setting out for more water drops. Being able to walk into the desert and put water and beans out is, feels like a small act, but it actually is really important. For seven of the charged humanitarian workers, their next court hearing is on February 23rd. As for ASU instructor Scott Warren, who is facing a felony, ASU said in a statement that they don't believe the charge will impact his ability to fulfill the current duty with the university. We will continue to follow this developing story. For updates, visit our website at cronkitenews.azpbs.org. In the Broadcast Center, Lillian Donahue, Cronkite News. The Trump administration has ended temporary protected status for several immigrant groups. Among them, nearly 200,000 Salvadorans are affected. Now they have 18 months to find a legal way to stay in the U.S. or go back to their home country. We spoke with one Valley Salvadoran family to see how they're coping with the decision. Well. It's a typical evening in the Delgado family's home. You. A spelling contest before dinner. I win. Homework scattered across the counter and endless laughter. <laughs> but the recent TPS decision has this household on edge. I can't believe this is happening. I can't believe this is the end of the TPS for us. We're like, what are we going to do? I have my family, I have a house, I have a business. Wilbur Delgado has been living in the U.S. for 21 years under work permits and the TPS program. Why now? If we've been doing things like the way it's supposed to be. If they were to face deportation, he and his wife say they would not take their three U.S. born children to El Salvador. They say the country is too dangerous and lacks opportunity. I'm afraid of uh, separate from my kids. I think it's if just thinking about it, it just, I mean, I'm not even want to think about it because I think I won't be able to sleep. How can you tell a five, seven year old, okay, look, we don't know if we're going to be here tomorrow, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. Nationwide, nearly 200,000 Salvadorans are TPS holders. 1,000 of them live here in Arizona. They're the parents of 1,100 U.S. born children in the state. After ending the program, the Trump administration has emphasized the temporary and temporary protected status. Many have argued that the Salvadorans should have solidified their path to citizenship while here, but it's not that simple. So let's be clear about something. TPS was not a path to citizenship. There was no way someone could apply for TPS, then apply for residency, then apply for citizenship. The Salvadoran consul says they're trying to do what they can to help. But many within the community say the consulate's efforts have not been enough. This is not fair at all. This is not plenty of time because these people have roots here. They have been here for too long. Long enough for the Delgado family to say the only home they know is right here in the valley. Stop playing with, you know, our dreams, you know, with our, our family. We can't sleep at night thinking, you know, what's going to happen tomorrow. The temporary protected status program for Salvadorans will end on September 9th, 2019. Immigration was just one of the topics on the table today as hundreds of the country's mayors gathered in the nation's capital. Cronkite News reporter Shelby Lindsay joins us live from our Washington bureau after catching up with several mayors from Arizona. Shelby. Some mayors who are angry over the administration's policy on sanctuary cities boycotted a planned meeting this afternoon with President Donald Trump. Mayors from Glendale and Mesa told me they were looking forward to discuss infrastructure with the president, but that was not the only thing on their minds. Homelessness is getting worse instead of better, uh, not just in Mesa, Arizona, but throughout the western United States. Uh, so that is a real call to action for us. Mesa Mayor John Giles led a panel of mayors and federal officials at the U.S. Conference of Mayors meeting here to talk about effective strategies for chronic homelessness and the problem of homeless veterans. 
Giles says it's a valley-wide issue. In the Phoenix Mesa metro area particularly, uh, ho homelessness, we have to look at it as a regional issue. Not only did they discuss problems, but they laid out solutions with federal officials. Part of the fight is just recognizing the problem Don't and collecting it, and data we, on it, one official says. Uh, but knowing what, what the issues are in your community, where the gaps are and so forth, um, having the right data and implementing those solutions um, will go a long way. Despite the, the problems, time, experts on the panel the said grant. there is hope. I'm confident based on the success that we've seen in many cities that working together we can solve a lot of these big problems. And Giles thinks good things are already happening in the Valley cities. Maricopa County is kind of the envy of a lot of other parts of the country. When you, when you visit other parts of the country, there's a lot of regional infighting, a lot of communities that are next to each other that are tremendous enemies, and that we just don't have that, uh, that environment uh, in, in the Mesa Phoenix area. We work very well together. The mayors have more meetings tomorrow. Mayor Giles will be leading a discussion on the 2020 census, and Phoenix Mayor Greg Stanton will be a part of a panel on climate change. Live in Washington, I'm Shelby Lindsay, Cronkite News. Resources are precious, and how they should be distributed to help people who are homeless is the mission of the annual Point in Time survey. Mari Nelson shows us how teams of people reach out to those living on the streets across Maricopa County. On one of the coldest mornings of the year, volunteers set out before sunrise to count and survey people who are homeless. I hear so many cries from people. Why don't they listen to me? The point in time count is a chance for the community to listen and help. Every year, teams from the Maricopa Association of Governments count the number of homeless and survey their needs, including mental and physical health. It's like such a sense of community to come out here and speak with individuals experiencing homelessness and just get their personal stories. Every time I interact with an individual experiencing homelessness, it's always something positive for me. According to the county agency, the number of homeless without shelter in Maricopa County almost doubled from 2014 to 2017. The point in time helps us like kind of just capture the data around our programs. Are our existing programs working enough for them? Um, is there room for improvement? Are there things that we need to maybe change? Sometimes the help comes right away. Once the team learned Shockley is a veteran, they called a service that helps homeless veterans. Just sometimes people just need someone to listen to them or hold their hand. The service sent a van that picked up Shockley and connected him to resources. In Phoenix, Mari Nelson, Cronkite News. The final result for the 2018 point in time homeless count will be released in May. It's been almost four months since the mass shooting at a Las Vegas concert, and one survivor from Arizona is finally being released from the hospital. Cronkite News reporter Jamie Fossenkemper introduces us to the woman doctors are calling a miracle. I feel strong and positive. 30-year-old Giovanna Calza Diaz was one of more than 500 victims at the Route 91 Harvest Music Festival turned mass shooting on October 1st. Calza Diaz, a mother and Hayden, Arizona resident, was transported by air ambulance to Barrow Neurological Institute here in Phoenix after being shot in the head. Her doctors were convinced that she was not going to make it. If somebody had said I would have succeeded in getting her to that goal, I would have told them there's just no way, it's really hard. After fighting for nearly six weeks, Calzadina's family faced the decision whether to take her off life support, <laughs> but her husband wasn't ready to let her go. I had a dream that Giovanna visited me. She hugged me and kissed me and she said everything's gonna be okay and she walked away. And that was, I called her mom and I said, we're keeping Giovanna alive. <laughs> She's going to be all right. Her family never gave up hope and never left her side. Sentiments that ultimately put this family back together. My kids and my family, I will not quit on them and I will not quit on myself. Her progress, progress from the day I first met her is nothing short of miraculous. In Phoenix, Jamie Fossenkemper, Cronkite News. Calza Diaz is expected to be discharged from the hospital tomorrow to rejoin her family. The medical marijuana industry is growing in Arizona. But attracting new customers can be a challenge. Coming up on Cronkite News, why words play an important role for medical marijuana dispensaries and their patients. 
And later, On Guard, it's a new look for an old sport that's finding a home in Phoenix. I'm Judy Woodruff, anchor and managing editor of the PBS NewsHour. The journalists of tomorrow face a fast-changing media landscape, but quality news remains vitally important to our communities, our country, and our world. At ASU's Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communication, students learn solid, reliable reporting, holding the powerful accountable, and rebuilding the public's trust. The Cronkite School and Arizona PBS preparing the next generation for a stronger future of journalism. As journalists at Cronkite News, we report on stories that matter to you by focusing on the local impact. We dig deeper and work tirelessly to keep you informed. Live in Wickerburg. Live in Los Angeles. In Cleveland. In Washington. In Louisville. From Jerusalem. Live in Philadelphia. From around the world to right here in Phoenix. At Cronkite News, we report the facts and stick to the truth. Governor Doug Ducey's proposal to cut down opioid abuse will be debated in the Senate later today. The bill was passed in a House committee yesterday with an 8-0 vote. It is expected to be debated in the entire House by tomorrow. Ducey's proposal limits prescription painkillers to an initial five-day supply. It also boosts pain clinic regulation and adds $10 million to help uninsured people get addiction treatment. The proposal is likely to reach the governor's desk by the end of the week. Ever since it was legalized by voters in 2010, the medical marijuana industry has rapidly grown here in Arizona. And so, too, has its hope to be seen with more sophistication. Cronkite News reporter Tim Johns is live outside one dispensary in Central Phoenix. Here outside Nirvana Center, you won't see the word marijuana on their signs. And inside, the medicinal pot is named after common foods to help patients decide what to buy. Bubblegum, ice cream, vanilla bean. You may know these as everyday food items, but would you be surprised to learn that they're actually different strands of marijuana? Max Shell helps to run the marketing team at Nirvana Center. Shell says that as the medical marijuana industry has become more mainstream, main, main, dispensaries main, main, main. are increasingly moving to more user-friendly terminologies than those used in the past. I think that people are definitely becoming more socially accepting of uh, cannabis and its uses. And, you know, I feel like uh, when people see names like green cracker marijuana, you know, it kind of throws them off a little bit. The idea is that by moving to softer marketing terms, the industry will attract new customers who might otherwise be wary of marijuana. And it seems to be working. Estimates for last year saw the medical marijuana industry in Arizona to now be worth over $360 million, a whopping 37% increase over 2016. And for patients, this shifting attitude is welcomed because they say it helps to destigmatize the industry that helps get them the medicine that they need. The disconnect of an actual drug that you don't exactly necessarily want to take, but replacing it with a name that's kind of fun and, you know, kind of cool, definitely helps. You may even notice that some marijuana dispensaries don't have the green cross on their signs either, which is a sign of the industry. Live in Phoenix, Tim Johns, Cronkite News. The lifts of the safest cities in Arizona is out. Coming up on Cronkite News, find out if your city made the list. Plus, Bill Gates invested $10 million in the far West Valley to build a new tech town. We'll take you inside the debate over the future of Tonopah. In the past few days, we've been in the 60s, but today we've warmed up into the 70s. Stay tuned to see if this weekend the 70s will stick around. I'm Ted Simons, host and managing editor of Arizona Horizon. Join us each weekday at 5.30 and 10 as we bring you the top newsmakers who impact the state. We cover the stories in depth that shape and affect our local communities, and we take the time to ensure that all voices are equally heard. For more than 30 years, Arizona Horizon has been your voice and your source for what matters most, right here on Arizona PBS. Hello from the children of planet Earth. Exploring, it's the lifeblood of the mission. Human beings are a curious bunch. What are we gonna see when we get really close? 
because an idea is crazy, it's not necessarily wrong. We were on our way. You don't get anywhere until you've tested the limits. That carries an intensity you can't imagine. You could hear people just, whoa. Oh my God, absolutely spectacular. It's a rush. We ask a lot of our heroes. We are at a remarkable moment. We're going farther than any exploration ever has. The most recent FBI uniform crime report identifies the safest cities in Arizona, ranking in the top 10 highest in the nation for property and violent crime rates. Coming in at number 10 is Surprise, followed by Paradise Valley, Buckeye, Maricopa, and Sawarita. Oro Valley comes in at number 5, San Luis ranked at 4, Summerton 3, Gilbert is number 2, and the safest city in Arizona is Florence at number 1. Of the 40 cities ranked, Tucson scored the lowest on the list. This list also identifies Arizona in the top 10 states for highest property and violent crime rates. Tonopah is about 60 residents, dozens of farm animals, and a lot of dirt roads. But Microsoft's Bill Gates is about to turn that far West Valley community into the first smart city built from the ground up. Madison Miller explains that some believe that could be an investor's dream. Technology takes over more and more um, facets of our life every day, and so maybe this city would accelerate some of that, and I, I have no problem with that. Bill Gates, the co-founder of Microsoft, just bought 25,000 acres. That will turn a barren area into a smart city. The plans include 80,000 homes run by iPads and iPhones, streets filled with self-driving cars, and be wired with fast-speed data networks. Real estate agents say it's already increasing home prices. An impact of something so large going out there, I think might make a really uh, big difference to the community. And we're hearing sides that, you know, they don't like the idea of growth, and yet growth is going to happen. The development is empty now, but is expected to be booming over the next decades. And so as soon as you start putting somebody's big name with a project, we seem to see a lot of that speculation. But real estate expert Rick Merritt says the area will take two years to develop because a new interstate needs to be built. Major developments like that, uh, they grow very slowly. Um, you know, they may grow a couple hundred units a year or something like that. So it's not going to be an overnight thing. And it'll really be the major developments will be contained within those master plan communities. But dairy farmer Dan Boschma is ready for the smart city. I think, I think it's a fine idea. In Tonopah, Madison Miller, Cronkite News. According to Belmont Partners, 3,800 acres will go towards office, commercial, and retail space, and 470 acres will be used for public schools. It was another chilly morning in the valley. But a warm-up is on the horizon. Nicole Randock is tracking our forecast. That's right, Adrian. The weather today is absolutely beautiful. Perfect day to get outside. Right here in the valley, we're expecting a high of 74 degrees. And across the state, looking at the current temperatures, as you can see, our temperatures have, temperatures have risen a few degrees due to a high pressure system that has moved into the state, bringing with it warmer degrees and also clear, sunny skies. Flagstaff is the cold spot of the state at 46 degrees. Up in the Grand Canyon, 51 degrees. Over in Lake Havasu, 68 degrees, and down south, Tucson at 73 degrees today. And now looking at our temperatures, valley wide, like I said, beautiful weather. We will remain in the mid 50s across the valley. And now looking at our weather the next few days, well, our highs are going to remain in the 70s and lows will remain in the mid 40s. Let's see, is the graphic coming up? There it is. All right, so highs will remain in the 70s. Lows will remain in the mid 40s. Come Friday, we'll drop about four degrees due to a slight disturbance that will clip the northern part of our state. But no fear, come this weekend, we will warm back up into the upper 70s. And come Sunday, look at that, a high of 80 degrees. Wow. Reporting from the Cronkite Weather Center, I'm Nicole Randock. The sport goes back for centuries, but have you ever thought what it would be like to fight with swords? I actually have. Coming up on Cronkite News.
we'll introduce you to the man who's bringing the historic sport to a home in Phoenix. Cronkite News weeknights at 5 on Arizona PBS. Fridays, it's at Cronkite News, your social sharing connection where you choose the news. Facebook likes and shares, tweets, retweets, and favorites. YouTube views and subscriptions. We're watching you watch us. From our digital home at cronkitenews.azpbs.org to your television, web browser, or mobile device. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Then join us for At Cronkite News, our weekly refresh, each Friday at 5 on Arizona PBS. You see it in movies and TV shows, but at Miracle Fitness, the medieval martial art of sword fighting is mounting a comeback. Hey, I go to this park and this dude teaches me sword fighting. Do you want to do that? And he's like, yeah. Sword fighting has been around for centuries, but Richard Marsden's love for the sport started 20 years ago. But I think, you know, all of us are fascinated by sword fighting. It's in our films, right? We see it through Star Wars, we see it through Game of Thrones, we see it in the Three Musketeers, and there's sort of a romance to it, and so people want to learn that. Marsden does it all. He's the co-founder of the Phoenix Society of Historical Swordsmanship, a history teacher at Peoria High School, and a writer and publisher of three books about swords and different styles of fighting. And the reason that he's written all these books? No one else has. I have a lot of information in my head. I want to be able to pass it on to others. My ultimate goal is to take this, these dead martial arts and bring them back to life again. The Phoenix Society of Historical Swordsmanship used to meet in a park, but has since grown to include classes with as many as 30 students meeting three times a week at Miracle Fitness. 24-year-old Randy Reyes has been training with Marsden for almost 10 years. You all right? I'm not going to lie, I thought it was a cult because I see all these guys dressed in black and they're swinging swords at each other. I'm like, what are you introducing me to? I don't understand. But then once I started talking with Richard and everything and just learning about the kind of like the history behind it and just like what the club was about, that interested me. One of the club's favorite swords to use is the long sword, which dates all the way back to the 1200s. When we spar one another, we are not actually trying to kill one another, but we are trying to make our lethal techniques as close as possible work. But even with the proper coaching, you might leave with a couple of battle wounds. I did not end up winning the fight, but the Phoenix Society of Historical Swordsmanship is part of the Historical European Martial Arts Alliance with 229 locations found across the United States and four in the state of Arizona. Cronkite News is proud to be the news division of Arizona PBS. Here's what's coming up on Arizona Horizon and PBS NewsHour. On the next Arizona Horizon, get the latest from the state capitol as we continue our updates with legislative leaders. And we'll look at the future of Phoenix in a world of continued global warming. I'm Judy Woodruff. On the next news hour, Miles O'Brien dives into the debate over dolphins in captivity. That's Wednesday on the PBS News Hour. That's it for Cronkite News tonight. Thanks so much for joining us. For top Arizona stories anytime, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org. It is a mystery. Ancient engineers carved a kingdom into cliffs, transformed desert into an oasis, and then suddenly vanished. Petra, lost city of stone on Nova. Tonight at 8 on Arizona PBS. Explore new ideas and new worlds here on Arizona PBS, a community service of Arizona State University. 
Arizona PBS programming is brought to you in part by the underwriting support of local businesses. Learn how you can support Arizona PBS and grow your own business by reaching viewers like you. Call 602-496-8664 or azpbs.org slash underwriting. Coming up next on Arizona PBS, life and world. Discover so much more at azpbs.org slash schedule, where it's easier than ever to find out what's on Arizona PBS. Access interactive digital and printable program guides, repeat times, and full episode descriptions. Watch program previews of best bets for the coming week. Search by title to find your favorite shows. You can even add programs to your calendar and get email reminders when they're about to start. It's easier than ever to find out what's on Arizona PBS. Discover so much more at azpbs.org slash schedule. Coming soon to Arizona PBS. Monday night at 9 on Arizona PBS. I've always been so attracted to the guy who lives out of a backpack and just travels. The world is my home. I can wander around and see so many things and meet so many people. I really couldn't answer and say when I'll be done traveling in this way. Being lost is where I'm found. I don't know what day it is. Every day is now. I am another you. Monday night at 11.30 on Arizona PBS. Support for Arizona PBS comes from viewers like you and from Hospice of the Valley, medical, social, and spiritual care for patients nearing end of life and support for their families. A not-for-profit community hospice, hob.org. Coming up next on Arizona Horizon, state Democratic leaders give us an update on a special session on opioids and other legislative goings on. Also tonight, we'll hear from a local freelance journalist honored for her reporting on underrepresented groups. And what is the future of Phoenix in an increasingly warming world? Those stories and more next on Arizona Horizon.